Dallas's defense has just been, I mean, about as suffocating as we've seen. I haven't been impressed, you know, by what mm. Dallas put on, on, on the field yet offensively. Is it a kind of a mid offense? Look at the release. There's your separation. Great route. Stutter and go. Gets by clean. That is unbelievable. May be the greatest catch I've ever seen. I feel like we don't talk about Dallas's offense enough. And I know four games in now, their 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 defense has just been lights out phenomenal for three of them. Uh, weird, you know, kind of game against Arizona. Obviously, they weren't taking Arizona very seriously, and they got bit, right? So that's fine. But three games, the other three games, Dallas's defense has just been, I mean, about as suffocating as we've seen in a long time in the NFL. Pretty good stuff. But the offense, I don't know, it's kind of a middling unit. So I'll ask you this, Matt. Is it a kind of a mid offense, or is it just that they're just getting by because this that's all they have to do? I think it's a pretty good offense. I would just say that we haven't totally seen them in like a super normal game script, right? Or at least in three of the four games we haven't. They didn't have to do much to beat the Giants in week one. That's for sure. They didn't have to do much to beat the Jets in week two. And this game against the Patriots, man. Oh, my God. It was disgusting. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was horrific. And it's not like it's an easy defense on the other side of it. And um, they definitely – they got. I think they got surprised by the Cardinals – I think yeah, they got they some. This is like a classic Cowboys thing to do: is to get beat by an inferior team, and then not just come back to win, but obliterate the team the next week. So, the defense right. played great in this game against the Patriots. They were swarming. They clearly wanted to send like a message, right? I, I think that the offense has been fine. You know, there hasn't necessarily been that like signature performance yet. You know, Dak right. is seventh in EPA per play. Um, I think that Michael Gallup looks really good. Like people aren't really talking about Michael Gallup. Um, but I think he's played really well to start the season. Brandon cooks like hasn't done much, you know, no, but I mean, right. He's done nothing. And, and he was a big acquisition for them, but I kind of never really bought the idea that like there was going to be this big gap between Michael Gallup and Brandon cooks. But I think Gallup has looked really good. Uh, he was a, I've always been a fan of his game, and I think last year he was just completely ruined by coming back too early from an ACL injury. I think CeeDee Lamb looks fantastic. Like, he's yep. taken over games in spots. They just need to be a little bit better in the red zone. There was the, there was the one sequence early in the game where, um, you know, they had a tight end drop a pass. They had um, kind of like another funky play, and then, like, Tony Pollard and Dak, like, had a late handoff, and – uh, oh, it was like a it was, the second play was like a low, super low percentage fade. Of course, I hate the and I'm not never a fan of the fade. No, uh, and then like the play after that, it was like a weird little delayed handoff and they get tackled right at the goal line. So they do need to fix their red zone woes. Unfortunately, red zone woes are kind of a, a like not a they're a feature, not a bug of the Mike McCarthy offense. So that is <laughs> that is kind of a concern. What do you think about Jake Ferguson? Like, I think he's played oh, well too, on, dude. You know me. I love Jake Ferguson. Come on now. Uh, I, like I said, I've been saying all off season and even last season, I was watching him play. I'm like, yo, this guy gives me some baby Mark Andrews vibes. Okay. Like I love, I love Jake Ferguson. I think they've got a, a, a good collection of pass catchers there. Um, we talk about, you know, the chargers, maybe not having a, a, maybe they have a good collection of guys, but they don't have enough variety, right? This is a, a, an offense that's got a plenty of variety, right? Like you've got CD lamb uh, that can work that short intermediate area. And then you've got two guys in Brandon cooks and Michael Gallup that I think can give you some verticality. Um, and then Ferguson, I think is a, is a very capable pass catching tight end. So yeah, no, I, I, I like the offensive makeup of Dallas. I just wonder if, you know, I, I haven't been impressed, you know, by what mm. Dallas put on, on, on the field yet offensively. And I just wonder, is that because of Mike McCarthy or is it because of game script? It's such an incomplete right now because we just don't know. Cause he, they, they've really been in, in three blowouts and then their game against Arizona. It just from top to bottom, it looked like they weren't prepared for that game. You know what I mean? So I, I can't believe we're, you know, almost a quarter into this season and we don't know what the Dallas Cowboys are <laughs> offensively, as strange as that sounds. Well, I'd say they're going to get a huge test this week, right, against the San Francisco 49ers. And, 
you know, they're two similar teams, right? Defensively, they can overwhelm you. They can take over a game defensively. Um, but there's one thing we know for sure. It's that San Francisco is the best offense in the league right now. So I think this is a big test for Dallas because – like, yeah, you can overwhelm a game defensively. The 49ers can overwhelm a, de- a game defensively. Dallas does not have the collection of talent that San Francisco does. I would argue that nobody does. Uh, like, right. McCaffrey might literally, and I know we never do this with running backs, but McCaffrey might literally need to be in the MVP conversation. Um, just at like, he's been more like in terms of valuable, he is such a valuable player to the San Francisco 49ers. So they can outscore you, but it, Dallas has a decent collection of talent, not a, co- a collection of talent like the 49ers do, but right. they need to be able to have enough. They do, I think have enough players to have that type of game where they can win a game on their own. We just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. You talk about the red zone stuff for Dak Prescott. Um, according to next gen stats in terms of total EPA, Dak Prescott has the second lowest total EPA uh, in the red zone to kind of give you an idea of how much this um, you know, the quarterback play has struggled uh, in Dallas, in particular in the red zone, minus 5.5 completion over expected, you know, uh, so that's not very good. Uh, and EPA per drop back is negative 0.33 again, where league average is um, negative 0.05. So not very good is Dak Prescott right now in the red zone. But I do think it's fair when they're talking about playing San Francisco, if you're looking for advantages anywhere, because I don't think they have an advantage at any particular spot. They, you know, San Francisco's got a better running back. They've got um, uh, their collection of wide receivers is better than the collection of wide receivers for Dallas. I think you, I would take George Kittle over as much as I love Jake Ferguson. I'm going to take George Kittle. Yeah, sure. Over Jake Ferguson. Right. So where does Dallas have an advantage? You would think, and it should be Dak Prescott right. over Brock Purdy. Right. So if the, if Dallas is going to win this game and it's not their defense carrying, it's got to be because Dak Prescott outplays by a wide margin Brock Purdy.